Welcome back to the second episode on the 1022 upgrade build. So today I'm going to be switching out the trigger group with my own, which is a much, much lighter trigger group, uh, just to get um, the five pound trigger off the uh, the build gun. And um, I'm also going to swap in the, my chassis, just to uh, help with floating the barrel. Let's see if that makes a big change. Just the chassis and the trigger. Nothing else will be changed for this. And we're going to work off that. So just like any 1022, uh, we're going to strip this one down to the bolt real quick. So it's uh, unloaded, clear, and racked back. So I'll take off the main takedown screw, which is on the bottom. We're going to take off our loosen. The, uh, the barrel band up here in the front. Okay, barrel band slips off. Safety goes halfway across and it should pop out of the chassis, or the stock in this case. Here we go, let's put this to the side because we're not going to be using this. So there we have the standard 1022 um, build. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take out the trigger group in its polymer case and we're going to drop in mine. So, it's always important to have proper tools. I'm also missing a punch block, but that's all right. I'm just going to push through the pins. There's one. That's the hammer going forwards. And here's the second one. Okay, and your trigger groups out. It's as simple as that with the 1022. I'm just going to release the trigger pressure. It's actually fairly clean. There's a little window on the side here so you can see your sear engagement. And uh, yeah, this isn't as dirty as I thought. It's um, it's pretty crisp inside. There's a little bit of dust, but nothing bad. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're going to get my trigger group and put it into this guy here. So let's put this aside. Okay, let's press this off. This will slide straight up. And uh, then we have just the normal takedown screw to go. Just gonna just connect the QD release here. Separate me. There we go. And what's beautiful about this chassis is it is completely free floated. As you can see from the V block right to the tip, there's nothing touching it. The uh, the barrel or uh, the, the the hand guard that is surrounding the barrel the picatinny rails are attached but they're attached to the main body they're not attached to the the action in any way so there's no direct force um changing your point of impact which is which is really nice okay so my body's out there i'm just going to push through these and we're going to put them into the other chassis But, uh, so this guy is going to go straight into um, into the uh, receiver of this here. Normally I'd be using my little um, tipped in gun vise, but we'll uh, survive with this one. So with the hammer back and cocked, you just sit it back and uh, you put in your two action pins. One there. one there okay so we're clear and hammers working just fine okay so just gonna put a little bit on this gonna put it into uh, my chassis we'll bring it out and we we'll shoot uh, we we'll shoot another three round and a five round just to see what kind of improvement with a free floated barrel and a uh, a uh, 2.8 2.5 pound trigger which doesn't flex under the, the weight of five pound draw anymore so uh, we'll see you back out in the range okay I'm just going to test out the uh, rifle with 
CCI Subsonic, same as before. Um, <laughs> this is my chassis. I'm not using the barrel cage because the uh, the sight that's on the rifle won't pass through it. That's no big deal. I'm going to uh, get my good solid two points of contact back here. And shoot there at 40 meters at uh, the target out in front of the same size target as before. We're going to see what kind of groups we get. There is a, a two and a half meters per second wind, but it's directly behind us, so it's pretty much non value. Um, we're going to see how this shoots. But uh, I have a funny feeling with my uh, much lighter trigger and a completely free floated barrel, we're going to get uh, a bit of a tighter group than the last day. Now, if we do find that the groups are drifting slightly to the left, uh, it's due to the wind behind me. Uh, it's shifting a little bit, but uh, if it's going to do anything, it's going to push it slightly left. Okay, I'm gonna go for center circle. So we're just going for groups. Okay, that was a three shot group. We can see it's to the left on the bottom left target. So I'm gonna go for top right target and we're gonna just check the group again. It's gonna be a five shot group. Again, there's nothing touching the barrel. Okay, and that might have been a four shot group, but that'll do for now. And just looking at the target, it doesn't seem to be too bad. Um, that last group was uh, just high of center circle. Looks like we have four pretty close to half of them away, and there's one high one. So it doesn't look uh, it doesn't look too bad. Now that's with this trigger, this original Ruger barrel. The next thing we're going to change out, I think, is uh, going to be the original barrel, and quite possibly after that the scope, um, just to see if it is causing any issue. It might not be causing any issue, but uh, those groups don't seem to be a lot smaller. They seem to be about the same. If I had to guess. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'm going to switch out the barrel next and leave this trigger in there. But uh, I'll also do a video on how to bring down your stock 1022 trigger from the five or seven pounds, whatever it comes from out of the box, down to a much more usable uh, two and a half or three pounds. Um, and all you got, you can do it all at home. You're not going to need any uh, sear stones or anything like that. All you're going to need is some uh, JB weld and maybe um, a, a rotary tool, tool or a file or uh, something just to score the metal, so we can get a good uh, base for the JB tool to um, to anneal to. But um, I'm going to shoot one more group, and I'll count at the end. I'm going to shoot a three shot group. before we end this and 
Let's see how it holds up. Uh, it's going to be to the right. It's going to be to the right of center. So that's a little bit tighter. We didn't get any uh, any big differences there. But uh, we bring these back. We get an average of these groups. I have a funny feeling it's a little bit smaller than last time. But um, we'll see when we get back. And uh, I'll put it up on screen. So that's it for now for this episode. So we've upgraded the trigger. And we've uh, floated the barrel. Just see if there's much of a difference. And um, we're going to work from there. So thanks very much for watching. And uh, I'll get you next time.